welcome to Best of the Worst, a celebration of the very best of the very bad. We'll be looking at everything from the very worst celebrity sightings to the worst use of a watermelon, not to mention this, the worst place to park a van full of Ming vases. <laughs> so, let's welcome our guest this week on David Mitchell's team, comedian Alan Carr. <laughs> and with Johnny Bourne tonight, DJ and presenter Sarah Cox. Round one is pick the worst, in which the teams try to pick the worst from a number of options. Once they've made their choices, the audience votes, and the team that the audience agrees with gets the points. Tonight we're picking the worst race, and our contenders are the 50-kilometre walking race, the snail race, the boat race, and this greyhound race. <laughs> is that the year they've tried to do the boat race without the boats? <laughs> It's really nice that all the people have turned up to see posh people drown. Just to make sure. It'd be interesting to know when the last person died during the boat race. When was the last drowning? Do you know, I don't think it's ever happened. Well, how can expect to be successful in the age of reality TV? <laughs> the 50-kilometre walking race, I would think, is the shittest ever. <laughs> and I'll tell you why. You don't do it at school, no one does. Because no child thinks, when I grow up, I want to walk like a guy who's got really bad problems with his arse. <laughs> What's wrong with this picture? Well, no one's turned up, have they? <laughs> Even the people with the water have gone, sod it, they're walking. <laughs> <laughs> is that a walking race where someone has incorrectly walked? You're absolutely right. Have is it the guy in front who's just lifted his legs yeah. off a little bit too much? This is right, yeah. The rule is you have to have at least one foot in contact with the ground at any uh. time. Yes, but if they're idiots for doing that, who is the twat that follows them for 50 <laughs> miles to check all their feet are in contact with the ground? That's the lowest of the sporting umpiring world. You see, I think they don't have anyone like that, and they all walk weirdly out of yeah. the stadium and then leg it. <laughs> and then walk weirdly in the stadium. Yeah. Like at the school where it's like, start running in the corridors, and you do that cut the funny kind of like, I'm not running. Kind of. they, maybe they were the kids who showed promise. Exactly. <laughs> walk in the corridor. Mind you, he shows promise as a walker. <laughs> I'm going to bring you to the uh, snail racing. Those guys know they're being photographed. Yes. They're thinking, yeah. this is a wacky occasion. Yeah. We'll yeah. put intense expressions on our faces. <laughs> Look at the stupid little stadium thing they've got. <laughs> <laughs> that? If, if this is a sport worthy of their attention, they should build a grandstand they themselves can sit in. It's <laughs> not a grandstand for other snails. Yes. <laughs> marketed it well because they've sold no seats at all to any slugs or any other because <laughs> the stand's completely empty. <laughs> London's first professional snail race was started by John McCrerick with the phrase ready, steady, slow. Which is odd, you'd have thought they might have got him to say something funny. <laughs> <laughs> monkey and Greyhound. Okay, Monkey and Greyhound. It's funny a enough, classic. What you're looking at there was the forerunner for traditional Greyhound racing. But then it turned out that the Greyhounds used to hate the monkeys and used to do that's why it's so heavily muzzled. Because that greyhound wants to eat the monkey. So you just thought, sod this. What we'll do is we'll just take the monkeys off the greyhounds. We'll just have the monkeys bait them up with sticks. <laughs> they just bait them up with sticks. <laughs> no, no, I'm kidding. This, I, I'm not kidding. This is exactly... <laughs> Ancient enemies, of course, the monkey and the greyhound. <laughs> Whole areas of Africa were laid waste by the great <laughs> monkey versus greyhound wars. <laughs> An age-old question. Humans spank the monkey. It's nice to know that monkeys spank the dog. <laughs> <laughs> the monkey said it's on the top to spank the dog, and, and that's where it came from. Racing monkeys on greyhounds was set up in Florida in the 1930s. Of course, for Americans, a monkey on top of a dog is a sport. For Koreans, it's set menu B. <laughs> <laughs> Any thoughts on what else we might have included? Can I mention horse racing? I think a fundamental problem with it is that it depends entirely on gambling. Now, when people say that we should gamble on something, they, they use the phrase, let's make this interesting. Now, I say, let's not make this interesting. Let's do something interesting. <laughs> let's do something you don't have to bet money on in order for it to be interesting. Yeah, this is, this is pretty tedious, these horses going along, but uh, now I'm completely ruined if that horse doesn't win, and actually it's holding my attention. Well, surprise, surprise. Why don't you just cut your own wrist and see if you get to the hospital in time? <laughs> But can I just also say in horse racing's defence that it is massive on Channel 4 and uh, we're right behind it. <laughs> I think the father's race, for me, 
is the worst of races. Have you done those? It's yes, I've got the mother's oh, car. I've got it coming just to me in a few years. It's a nightmare. Isn't it? The pressure. <laughs> <laughs> They've done the egg and spoon. They've done the sack race. He's done always the one really sporty dad as well. He's like, oh. yeah, he's limbering up, warming up his hammies. <laughs> <laughs> but it's all those kind of ones like egg and spoon, bean bag, free legged bag. race. I ate all those races because you know, for me, I was rubbish at cricket, rugby, football. So don't make up stuff for me to be shit at. <laughs> <laughs> don't. Yes. <laughs> when I won that egg and spoon, yeah. Yeah. No, it was an awesome moment in my life. My point is, that was the race I was really good at, was Egg and Spoon. Why does it suddenly stop when you're nine? Why does it suddenly say, no, you've had done with that now. Why don't they take it up to Olympic level? Yeah. Let's see what some Egg and Spooners can do. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder we're so shit when it comes to the Olympics. Because all our kids have trained to do sport, they don't can do that. <laughs> how, how freaky would that be, though, in a marathon? There's a Kenyan running, and she looks to her left, and there's a man with an Egg and Spoon. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe the egg and the spoon is what's missing from the speed walking. Because instead of having the guys looking at their ankles, trying to see if they're both off the ground, you just say, if the egg falls off, you're disqualified. Dave, you've tied that up brilliantly, haven't you? Yeah. <laughs> because we finished where we started, it's a natural coda, beautiful. And your remark about it forms a framing device. It's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so what's the worst then, team? <laughs> I, I am drawn to that one with that, um... Monkey. It's just the monkey's face. He looks so pissed off. <laughs> no, that's face focused. <laughs> the dog must be really confused because dogs essentially have got the wrong end of the stick about everything anyway. When, when you own a dog, the dog thinks he's in some kind of pack with you and therefore should attack postmen and not attack you. <laughs> Dogs are idiots. <laughs> I could outsmart any dog. <laughs> <laughs> But should we go for that one, then? I think so, yeah, yeah that monkey. OK, the greyhound. Well, <laughs> Coxie and I think you're fundamentally wrong. Yeah. Firstly, if that was on telly, I would watch it. <laughs> would you? Oh, I'd watch monkeys, definitely, on greyhounds. I'd watch it all day. I'd buy videos, I'd go there. <laughs> I'd have a, we'd have a favourite monkey. We might even get involved, Sarah and I, with breeding. Yeah. I mean, is that an offer? Of... <laughs> you, me and a monkey. <laughs> <laughs> Muzzles are quite sexy anyway. I'd go more and put them in the full rubber head mask. <laughs> Both of them. And just before the traps open, they like unzip the eyes and they're like, wait, wait. <laughs> but they unleash the gimp. Strap him to the dog. I don't think it's fair to, to say that that's a good form of racing just because it's the one most likely to break down to the, some sort of cross species gangbang. <laughs> God knows the Oxbridge rowers have probably been in and out of each other's asses for the whole training period. <laughs> OK. That's why we're not picking that one. We're saying walking. Because none of us have ever watched it. It's for people who were no good at any other sport, involves the lowest form of referee. These people actually think they're involved in a sport. That monkey on the greyhound, he knows he is. <laughs> we're confident the audience will back us up. Well, well what with all the rears you've managed to get them to say to you, I think you're right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling absolutely screwed. <laughs> Remember, audience, a vote for us is a vote for the people who lose. <laughs> To score our points, the audience needs to agree with you, so let's see what they say. Audience, Coxie. vote now. Coxie. I know they'll do the right thing. <laughs> and I can tell you that the worst race is... walking. Yes. <laughs> now it's time for our best of the worst bottom five. This week, a rundown of the very worst celebrity sightings. Famous faces spotted in everyday objects. At number five, who is this in a tree in Wiltshire? <laughs> I think as everything that looks like everything, Elvis. There's a touch of maybe Gary Glitter before he shaved it all off. <laughs> well, he, before he shaved it all off, before he <laughs> removed it. <laughs> Easy. Um, sorry, well, I'm saying he's maybe bald. There have been worse things said about him. <laughs> <laughs> do you, Dave, do you feel slightly cheated that we didn't get the glitter cution? <laughs> the glitter cution. Well, for a while, it says Gary Glitter to be executed. I was thinking, <laughs> that is a show. <laughs> <laughs> Gary's going to come down. We're going to get that. <laughs> Gary doing that trademark like that. That's, that's the glitter cushion. Yeah. And they really build it up. I think he's going to whip the wig off for the electrode. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, Gary, give him a show. <laughs> it never happened. He got, what, three years? It's... From execution to three years. Gutted. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, yes, obviously, it is Elvis Presley in a tree. But it is an uncanny coincidence, of course, because Elvis was killed by an awkwardly shaped log. <laughs> Number four, who is on this iron? Is it Jesus? I think it might be the hair. Might be G Cher. Cher or Jesus. <laughs> well, I'm going to give you a clue. Football and irritating. Kevin uh, Keegan? No. Irritating pundit. Jimmy Foot Hill. Yes, ah. it's Jimmy Hill. Ah. <laughs> this was discovered by Scotsman Brian Martin. The Daily Record asked Jimmy Hill to comment and instantly regretted it. <laughs> <laughs> At number three, you may notice that the back of his head is missing. Oh, Kennedy. J John F. Kennedy. Brilliant cock -sick. Brilliant. Yeah. It is JFK. Tell yep, you, President you, Kennedy. It, spotted it, in some rocks. There is actually a mountain in America where the faces of some presidents, you can actually make out <laughs> really quite... It is uncanny. We've you actually got, we've got that here, I think. See if you can spot them. There. <laughs> At number two, who is this in a gatepost in the street? There's not many celebrities with bird shit for eyes, though, is there? <laughs> Like the true in Shroud, more look at it. Maybe Jesus pushed his head up against it. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the gatepost is in Liverpool where he used to live. John Lennon. Yes, it is John Lennon. And oh. Keith Andrews there is uh, an old childhood friend of Lennon's. As you can see, he was the walrus. <laughs> <laughs> and at number one, who can we see here? Oh, it's the kitten. Karen Carpenter. <laughs> is it Rasputin? It is <laughs> Rasputin. It, it is. is. It is. Oh, it is. The Russian Rasputin in a kitten's ear. How did Rasputin die? Cyanide, then shot, then hurled in a river, and, and then, then he when they fell in a cat's ear. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he was poisoned, clubbed, shot three times, then thrown into an icy river where his body remained for three days. Police recorded a verdict of suicide. <laughs> So, worst team at the moment is David and Alan, but still plenty to play for in part two. See you in a minute. <laughs> Welcome back to Best of the Worst, and it's time to ask which ends the worst. Two video clips, just one question. Which is going to end in the worst way? The first clip is from Australia, and it's this. So, bomb. Oh, oh, oh. There it is. Oh. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> Yeah, so that's explosives in a melon, yeah? Then you have if you make me go to the hospital, oh, right? Sweet. But a hospital, small hospital, that's for weak dudes go to hospitals. <laughs> weak dudes go to hospitals. <laughs> yes. And also people who've just had their heads blown off by <laughs> Think you'll be there later with his brain showing. Go. Yes. No, I'm fine. <laughs> 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 You see, Dinner. when you see that kind of thing happening, you think, this is why we need a major world war every generation. Yeah. <laughs> In order for young people like that, with the urge for self-destruction, to have some German guns to run at. Yeah. <laughs> Rather than just pointlessly ruining a perfectly delicious melon. Or just, just <laughs> running into battle with dynamite on there. Yes. <laughs> right then, light the fuses for yeah. the morons. <laughs> Go off any minute, sir. Well, run, man, run! Well, let's <laughs> make suicide morons ready for duty, <laughs> Ah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's easy, mate. Hospital, small hospital. <laughs> Here is the second clip, and it's from Russia. <laughs> to me, there's a few things here. One, that is a shit band, yeah? <laughs> I'm sure that's a band. That could be some sort of art yes. installation. Yes. Look at the yes. in the background. But Dave, you think if the band are that bad, <laughs> how bad are the guys who rigged the stage up? <laughs> what I notice here is driving rain, bad band, electrics. That is a health and safety nightmare. Nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> Sticking the electric mic so into thinking, the rain. What can I do yeah. to really get this crowd going? Look at them. I'm going, ya la 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 la. <laughs> They're not responding, it's driving right <laughs> <laughs> they've, they've run off, they've seen that it's all going to explode yeah. any minute. That's why there's no na 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 back. <laughs> like, <Yeah>. Run! <laughs> <laughs> done wrong as well here is that they put that much money inside the disabled facilities with the ramp. <laughs> <laughs> what happened next is whatever's going to come down that is. ramp. <laughs> Maybe some guy's head attached to a watermelon lands in the middle of the stage. 
<laughs> right, now it's which ends the worst, so which of these two clips is going to end the worst? I think that the Russian guys, because if that turns to custard, the guy with the medal on his head, if that goes tits up, we wouldn't be allowed to show this on telly, because that is simply <laughs> a guy's head coming off. <laughs> That's the deer hunter, right that, there. That really is. <laughs> You've got to go by the principle that the worst things in history ever always happen in Russia. <laughs> Absolutely you know, right. Back with, the, back with the war theme, in every world war, X people die. Half of them are always Russians. Oh. Even though Russia's usually on the winning side. <laughs> so they, they say at the beginning of the war, however many of your guys die, yeah. we'll match. <laughs> <laughs> and you think the melon, why do you think no, the melon? No, no, I, I think the war is going to end up fine. I think it's just going to little by poof, and I just think it's going to have a delicious starter. <laughs> 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 Coxie, what do you reckon? I just can't stop watching his white jeans and the Russian <laughs> thing that's sort of it. hoping he dies. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you're both gonna go with Russia. Let's take a look, starting with this one. Hospital <laughs> Schmospital. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> 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 Then he turns round and you can see his brain. <laughs> the watermelon is actually a vegetable, as is the Australian, after trying the same stunt with just a tad more dynamite. <laughs> so did our Russian rockers come to the worst end? Let's just take a look. <laughs> la, 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 la. The band played on. <laughs> wow. In Russia, they just think it's part of the act. <laughs> He's going <laughs> on. Good man. She gets up and starts dancing. <laughs> He looks like he's played worse gigs. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like, what's the big deal? Yeah. So the set's fallen down, we've had two women crushed. This is Russia, for Christ's sake. <laughs> Teddy, when the world ends, the people of that country won't <laughs> notice. <laughs> <laughs> the good news is, the same set designer has just got the contract for James Blunt's next tour. <laughs> So, by a knockout, the Russian clip ended the worst. The points, therefore, go to both teams. <laughs> All to play for now as we turn to the wall of worst. Our final quickfire round, one point per question, so fingers on buzzers. Ooh, we start with worst bag. What's this bag designed to contain? Uh, David now. Is that just a very tiny woman who refuses to travel light? <laughs> <laughs> Tiny bag. New thing in Amsterdam, people can have a prostitute with them at all times. They buy them at the airport. You've got a shag bag. The Scots call it a shag bag, everyone else, tiny bag. In America, it's a hooker hold all. A yeah. hooker hold all. Yeah, I could have a bum bag. Yeah. Good night. Yeah. It's Alan's bum bag. <laughs> undertaker? She's a jet setting undertaker. I'll give you the point. This bag is designed to contain a dead body. It is, in fact, a coffin. What do you oh. think happens to the tiny bag at the end of the holiday? <laughs> Yeah. What's wrong with that? <laughs> What's wrong with that? <laughs> What's wrong with killing What's a prostitute? <laughs> Worst sheep. What's special about this Romanian sheep? Johnny. Does he just refuse to fit in? <laughs> Obviously some sort of hilarious deformity, you know, an extra leg. Is yes, it? exactly right. Oh. He has got, he's got five legs. Can't <laughs> see. You've got a farmer's daughter from Bolton, you see? The farmer also proudly showed the press his five-legged donkey until someone pointed out his obvious mistake. <laughs> Worst offender in the USA SpongeBob SquarePants came under fire from Born Again Christian groups for what? <clears throat> Johnny uh, and for Sarah. being not only a big yellow sponge but a gay big yellow sponge. Absolutely right. SpongeBob was depicted holding hands with Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy. Apparently, a, <laughs> apparently a coded message that. suggesting that gay sexuality is acceptable. <laughs> I'm still bang on Balamori. But what about the pink one that lives in the castle on the yeah, hill alone? They should be worrying about him, not Spongebob. Oh, yeah, what about Big Cook, Little Cook? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wonder how they got their names. Yeah, <laughs> dirty <laughs> bastards. <laughs> you see, 
I get the History Channel, so I just watch Solid Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> With the similar haircut. <laughs> Worst map. What's particularly useless about this map? Johnny and Sarah? It looks like it's a map under a microscope. I'll give you the point for that. It's uh, a nano map made by US scientists from strands Foxy, of DNA. You are playing a Woo! blinder. <laughs> a thousand times smaller than a human hair. Oh. You think that's hard to look at, you should try folding it up. Right. <laughs> Why is it always a hair? It's always a human hair all the same, or smaller than a human Finger fingernail. Yeah. Yeah. And they always stick it in an ant's mouth, don't they? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Look how small it is, it's in an ant's mouth. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, here's what that map looks like again. Or if you're a woman, this is what it looks like. <laughs> uh, fingers back well, on buzzers. Like that there, look at them turning me in the front row. <laughs> they look like the sort of crew you don't want to fuck with. <laughs> Seriously. Worst injury. How did Welshman Darren Williams sustain this injury? Uh, that does not, to me, look like a normal-shaped human skull. That looks like... Welshman Darren Williams. Yeah, no, I know. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm saying, I, I'm, I'm half Welsh myself. I'm not and half German! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not I'm, not, mate, I'm not a fascist. Die, Hitler! I don't love Adolf Hitler, and I don't think that the Welsh are monkeys. <laughs> what I'm saying is that maybe he has sustained some sort of injury that has made his jaw not quite where it should be. <laughs> Is it a fishing weight? It's government? a fishing weight, yes. And he's, and he's cast it and it somehow entered his head. No, exactly he's, right. He's yes. lived as a cod for 60 <laughs> years. <laughs> he, thinks, he thinks he's a cod. Terribly traumatising the day he was caught by his own father. <laughs> <laughs> Worst photo shoot. Have a look at this one. Explain what's happening here. Uh, is it, he's, uh, President Bush is sort of doing lost property. Um, <laughs> you know, the various things that get left around America. He goes through them every week. He's just been given uh, some Lycra Speedos by a champion US University swimming team. Bush was so excited he put them on straight away, but was disappointed when he got to the pool and saw the no bombing sign. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and at the end of that round, let's take a look at the final scores. And this week's winning team is Johnny and Sarah, uh -huh. but this week's worst team is David and Alan. <laughs> Our thanks then to Johnny and Sarah, David and Alan, and there's just time for a final look at the this, the worst thing for a girl to see at the start of a speed dating evening. <laughs> <laughs> You've been watching Best of the Worst. Good night. <laughs>《10 past 12 tonight, The Killer is live. Showing off tracks from the new album, Sam's Town. Makes the album chart show a must-see. Next tonight, Charlotte Church, Jessica Stevenson, Alan Cumming. And I tell you, if there was a swear box, it would make a sweet fortune.